as our next speaker, our next speaker is one who needs no introduction to the front half of this room. She has been for a long time one of the most popular professors at Stern, Dolly Chug, Associate Professor of Management and Organizations. Dolly first joined Stern in 2006 after her PhD at Harvard, but prior to becoming an academic, she also had a very successful corporate career with companies such as Morgan Stanley, Merrill Lynch, Scholastic, and Time. She currently teaches MBA courses in leadership, management, and negotiations. In 2018, Professor Chuk published her first book entitled The Person You Mean to Be, How Good People Fight Bias. The book received considerable acclaim from many authors, including Malcolm Gladwell, Adam Grant, Billie Jean King, and others. At Stern, Professor Chuk's research focuses on the psychology of good people. So all of us at Stern? While she has won a number of prestigious awards for her research and service, the one she says she's proudest of is the Stern School of Business Teaching Excellence Award from 2015. Today, she will talk to us about being the person you mean to be. Please welcome Dolly Cho. Thank you, Dean Sundaram. Class of 2019, I am so honored to join you and your loved ones on this wonderful day. So it's graduation season, and recently I was speaking to a friend. She had just attended her son's graduation, and she was rightfully so proud, beaming proud. And she said she was not just proud of his accomplishments, which were considerable, but most of all, what she made her most proud was that he was such a good person. And I thought to myself, absolutely, he is. I know him. She should be really proud. In fact, many a graduation speaker this time of year focuses on just that message, be a good person. And I, I get it. And yet, I have to confess, as a social scientist who studies the psychology of good people, I want you to know the three reasons why this message makes me a little bit nervous. First, research tells us that, for the most part, many of us feel a strong need to be seen as good people. It's an identity that we hold really tightly. Second, we tend to talk about being a good person as an either or. Either you are a good person or you're not. And then three, the data shows us that none of us, none of us, live up to our own good person standards all of the time. And yet, we still manage to hold on to that good person identity because remember, either or. An identity we hold tightly, either you are a good person or you're not, so you're going to go in the I see myself as a good person. So if we put these three things together, maybe you'll see why I'm worried. When we make mistakes and fall short of our own standards, like I do all the time, inevitably what happens is we go into this red zone defensiveness. We protect our good person identity. In fact, unconsciously what happens is most of us focus on protecting our good person identity after we make mistakes more than actually learning from the mistake we made. So take me for example. If a student, which has happened, emails me to say that a reading I've assigned is sexist, or when I publicly confuse two students of the same race who look nothing alike for each other in front of the entire class. When I make these mistakes and they're pointed out to me, I become red zone defensive. It's ugh, awful. The mistake gets made, I hold tightly to my good person identity and nothing gets learned in that moment. But here's the thing. You see, in most pursuits, such as learning to value a company or learning to navigate a new city, as many of you will do soon, 
we naturally seek the knowledge of experts. We make mistakes, and what's most important is that we get better after we make that mistake. But when it comes to being a good person, we expect we should know how to do this. And so when the mistakes happen, we don't view them as places to learn. And so that's why I believe that thinking of ourselves as good people is actually holding us back from being better people. It prevents us from learning from our mistakes because we've bought into the notion that good people don't make them. So, I think we should let go of the notion of being good people. I'm not letting us off the hook. Instead, I'm setting a higher standard for the class of 2019. Let's be what I call goodish people. A goodish person is not someone who makes no mistakes. It's someone who is constantly learning from and taking ownership for their mistakes. A goodish person knows that there are costs of our mistakes when it comes to questions like ethics, inclusion, diversity, bias. These mistakes have real costs on real people. So in fact, as goodish people, rather than waiting for others to point out our mistakes and then going into my favorite red zone, we become better at noticing the mistakes ourselves. We become better at seeing our own blind spots. We know the world around us is always changing. So just like we keep upgrading our knowledge of technology, we do the same regarding ethics and diversity. And when we do that, we do, in fact, keep getting better. Goodish is the path to that. Sidney J. Harris, an American journalist, once said, the three hardest tasks in the world are neither physical feats nor intellectual achievements. They're moral acts to return love for hate, to include the excluded, and to say, I was wrong. For me, coming out of that red zone defensiveness, saying I am wrong can be the hardest part of being a goodish person. But guess what? I am getting better. I can see my blind spots a little better than before, and we all can do that. Class of 2019, find your blind spots. Someone once said, if you're sure you have no blind spots, that's your blind spot. <laughs> Let yourself keep getting better. Let yourself keep growing. Goodish is better than good. We, I, will miss you so much. Godspeed. Good work and congratulations.